So the, the most recent thing I've done is I, I have done a project for the museums in Balboa Park, and they wanted something that would kind of have people look at the park in a new way. Balboa Park kind of suffers a little bit from like the, the Statue of Liberty problem, where uh, people in New York never go to see the Statue of Liberty because that's what the tourists do, and they've been there, they've seen it, you know. Uh, they don't feel like they've got anything kind of going on. So, where's Balboa Park? Balboa Park is in San Diego. I'm sorry, in Balboa Park. And, uh, and it's kind of like Central Park, it's this big park, all the museums are, there are buildings in the middle, and so the museums are located there. And I don't want to go over on from over time, but I'll get to the point, which is that um, what I came up for them was what I'm calling a cell phone adventure. Um, you call a number on your cell phone and you listen to messages and there are markers in the park that you find. You, you get a particular message for that marker and then it tells you where the next one is. And then you go look for it and find it, uh, that sort of thing. Now you can see how that would just be a nice tour where you show up someplace and it says what you're looking at is this. And, but that's not what happens at all. Instead, there's this whole story about this woman who has an anomaly detector and the guy who has the anomaly decoder. And, the anomalies are actually thoughts that people have thought in the past which have become embedded in the landscape. And so they can pull these thoughts back out. Um, but she and he don't trust each other so they communicate entirely through a voicemail system. And so really you are following, you're kind of you know, voyeuristically following behind these couple as they're bickering about retrieving thoughts from the past, but then also talking about what do they mean. And then the thoughts are very evocative. They come from the World War II era. So I mean, that's kind of an ultimate reality experience, right? You kind of, I kind of created this whole story um, that goes, um, which none of which is true, but which imparts additional meaning to the things which you see in the park, which can look just pretty normal or whatever. You begin to realize that there is a history and that there are other people doing stuff in the park that kind of just gives a sort of mystery and um, excitement to what's going on. So, and then just the last thing I'll say is some other, I mean, that alternate reality experience is kind of a small group one where you play with your cell phone and you can go by yourself or with your family and listen to messages. But some of the other alternate reality experiences, like the world without oil, the oil shortage, I mean, that is something that everyone in the world is in together. And so it can be this sort of massively collaborative story making project where we're trying to actually figure out what it's like to live in a world with less oil. And people, you can read accounts from people all over the world kind of talking about it. So that's kind of the, the realm that I operate in. And you can see that it's, it's kind of a, a bit different. There is no virtual world. You don't have an avatar, uh, kind of none of that stuff. And instead, the game is coming to you or you're going through the game, you know, using methods that you probably already use, the internet, uh, you know, browser on your internet or your cell phone or um, something like that, Facebook. And with alternate reality games, um, who here is familiar with alternate reality games before you came tonight? So, so maybe half of the people in the audience, yeah. Um, so the, uh, they're becoming more and more popular. There's more of them going on for a real wide variety. Of, there's certainly commercial interest, so there's movies that come out and have them, like the Batman movie that last came out, had a big alternate reality game, and, and things, but you specialize in, uh, what? Okay. You know, I, I, am, I don't really work on alternate reality games, which are about um, selling a brand or selling a product or something like that. I'm interested in those which are collaborative around, you know, when you're a better person at the end of the game than you were when you started, then I begin to get interested in that sort of game. So, so that's sort of like the world without oil. Yeah, the world without oil. And um, you know, the, the Balboa Park one is very much a kind of a experiencing the history of the park and a history of San Diego. I mean, character, there's a Japanese American character who uh, you know, gets interned, and there's a Hispanic uh, woman who uh, becomes Rosie the River, Rosa, Rosario the River. Um, and uh, you know, kind of stuff like that. So you really do learn something um, at the end of the game because I think that's kind of the missing ingredient in a lot of games, right? You you play them for 50 hours, and at the end, you know, you've won, you've done amazing things, but you yourself are 
still, you can still be relatively the same, you know, um, and I think that's kind of too bad.